So I still want to get some of this blue-green paint onto these cream-colored patches here. See if we can connect things a little bit. And then I want to give the whole truck a nice coat or two of good old patina sauce. My version. So let's see if we can refine the patina somewhat. Coming up. Welcome back to my one-man shop out here in the forest. My name is Duff. And many others have actually asked how you write it. So let me do that. So you write it D I V. As simple as that. But I think the V is a bit of a problem for some people. So you can also write it if you want. D I F F. Duff. That's my name. It's like that thing in there, man. Differential. But the first part, diff. <laughs> so now you've probably noticed that I'm writing with the wrong hand. <laughs> so I'm not only a single-hander, I'm also a left-hander. The clever beat people says this. They say that the left side of your body is controlled by the right side of your mind or your brain. So what can we conclude from that? that only left-handers are in their right minds. <laughs> so all these panels here have actually gone very rusty in a relatively short space of time. <laughs> Maybe too rusty. Not that it really matters. Um, in this flashback here, you will see how it looked when I was fabricating all of this. Shiny bare metal. And then I treated it with the hydrogen peroxide scenario. There's a link up on the screen if you want to see that process. And I also sprayed it a few times with some salty water. And uh, this is the result I mean, I don't know, not a long time, eh? I can't quite remember now, maybe a month or somewhere there. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is to whack this with a wire brush just to get rid of all the flaky and loose rust. No, I'm busy creating a rust cloud here in the shop. I think I better do this outside. Going bold, what a crappy cup brush. Its time on earth is officially over. <laughs> Got a new one though. I'll we'll just get this one off here. Um, I can't just pop down to the corner shop quickly. So I always try and be stocked up with consumables and whatever. The way prices are going these days, I actually think it's better than money in the bank. It's an investment, man. Awesome. I'm actually now exposing some of that original paint down here on the running board. That's
Going along on this build, you'll know that these doors did not come with the original cab. It actually looked like they might have been black somewhere back in ancient times. Um, so I have to find a way to get some of that blue-green paint on these black patches so that it matches. Oh well, no, I'm going to do that. Let's see. So I'm just slightly sanding this old black paint to provide a bit of a key. Let's wipe it down with some thinners. Just to get rid of the worst of that rust dust. <laughs> So I took this original piece of the truck to my local paint shop as a sample and then my, they mixed me up just a little bit of that color. It's called as the base color. It's basically quick dry enamel. I think some of you guys call it tractor paint as well. Um, I had some black and some beige on my shelf. So I'm going to use that to create variations of this color as I go along. I've got a little bit of my paint here in my um, little container thinned down and now I'm just going to put it on here and mess around with it and see what we can achieve. I don't want that run. Trying to basically sort of first put it just on the black parts and then we'll see how that turns out. This is just old-fashioned quick-drying enamel. Doesn't quite look right, so I've added a little bit of beige here, just to get a change in color. Lighten it up a bit here and there. A little bit more beige, maybe, let's see how that works. <laughs> I think I'm going to let this dry for a while and then whack it with some sandpaper to see what happens then. Yeah, too bright I think. Let's see what happens if we do this. Yeah, it's getting better now. I think that's an improvement. I'm gonna mess around with this a little bit. Let's see how it turns out. <laughs> so I think I might have discovered the technique now. You don't want to paint it on with strokes, but you rather dab it on with little dabs like what I'm doing now. I think that's getting the best results and I'm just putting it on where I see the black paint, the original black paint. So it looks like another secret is to have your paint quite thin and not too thick because you can always go back over it and you won't get that harsh color right from the beginning or strong color. It's probably a better word. So I keep messing with the consistency of the paint by occasionally putting a little bit more thinners and also I'm playing with variation in the paint color because the beige that I added in my little pot <laughs> which is just a coke bottle cap I didn't stir it in properly so it actually creates slightly different colors depending on where I pick it up in my little bottle cap. So just, I'm just trying to, to, to get variation in consistency and in color. And I actually now, I'm just following what basically what nature gave me and I'm only applying it where I can see that original black paint. And sometimes when I feel it's too thin in a spot, I can give it a sort of a second coat.
So let's see what this jabbing business looks like from a distance. Well, if nothing else, but it's definitely <laughs> doesn't look like your typical fake patina job. Kind of reminds me of uh, verdigris on copper. <laughs> but you know what, it's actually, we should maybe call it uh, patina enhancement. I mean, after all, it was just painting by numbers. I just, uh, all the original bits of black, I basically just colored that in. Just because it's so different, I actually think I like it a lot. I'm going to leave it like that. I might fiddle a little bit more with it here and there with some different colors. But for the most part, I think it's going to work. For me, anyway. <laughs> right, so with the door done, it's time I give my attention to the cream patches in the back there. So this uh, panel used to be like a white color before I got hold of it. And there was a little bit of a creaminess underneath the white. So I did leave a few spots of it in just to have something. So I think I'm going to color this in as well. So I'm just going to sand this lightly to provide a key for my paint. And just because variety is the spice of life, <laughs> I'm going to try a different technique now. I've got my little airbrush. So let's see how this is going to work out. I always save my old spray can caps because they make such handy little containers and in this case I'm using them to mix up small amounts of my paint. Um, I can add a little bit of my beige to lighten that color. The beige seems to work much better than white. And then of course if I add a little bit of black I will darken my base color. Well I guess that's better than what we had but um, the color is too uniform. We need some color variation, so I've added a little bit of black. So let's see. So just taking inspiration from the original patina here, I think I need a third color. So I've added more beige to my base color. And let's see what that does. And maybe just a tiny touch of a fourth even lighter shade. Yes, yeah, so you can mess around with this business forever. Let's just stand back a little bit to see what it looks like so far. Hmm, I guess not too bad. I tell you, I've got a love-hate relationship with this business. I'm never 100% happy. I suppose it's a case of you either mess with it until you're happy or until you are sick of it. <laughs> and I think I am now sick of it. So enough of this painting business. Let's turn our attention to the patina sauce. So this is what I'm going to use, some boiled linseed oil. Don't use raw. Raw stays sticky for weeks, so it's got to be boiled linseed oil and some mineral turpentine or even mineral spirits will work I'm sure um, and then I chuck some of it in my container 
I don't really measure my quantities. I just want to thin it down a bit. But if you want to make, want me to make a call, maybe two parts oil or one part turps, it doesn't really matter. It's not critical. It could even be 50-50. Then you splash some of it on your steel. I haven't gone to any great lengths to remove the rust dust <laughs> from the wire brushing. Just gonna rub it all in and it's all gonna just become part of the flavor and add more character. I'm just using a dirty old rag. You can use a nice clean one, but it's gonna get dirty very soon. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. So important to rub it in with a rag. You just want a thin coating. Um, I do use the paint brush to get it into crevices like this. But then of course I will still rub it afterwards. And now that rich old <laughs> rust color comes through. And we've gotten rid of that orangey look. This is nice, I love it. Sorry about the rattling bangles. I'll make a point of taking this one off so we don't get the rattle anymore. I wonder if I can even get it off. It's been on here forever. I'll make a plan. Ah, no, it's too tight. Or well, maybe I'll just tie them together with a piece of wire. <laughs> Cable tie, man. It's much friendlier than a piece of wire. So you want to make sure that you uh, rub this in very nicely. You just want a thin coating. So you don't want to leave a puddle or a thick layer. If you leave a thick layer, it just becomes all yucky. It doesn't look nice. So wiping my rust stained oil over the paint that I applied adds more effect and makes it look even older. So I think it works really well. Nothing like real patina. I mean, there's just such a story here, man. You've got to love it. Now, I just know there's going to be many guys who will say, just clear coat it. <laughs> Watch the comments. Well, for me, clear coating, mixing up 2K, masking, spraying, fumes. It's not a just quick business, man. And it's an unfriendly process. I see many cars in a gloss clear coat. I mean, it looks like personal opinion, but it looks like glass or the car is covered in plastic. It becomes trailer queen stuff, man. We're back to square one. I mean, you've got this perfect finish. You're too scared to scratch it. And if you scratch it to repair, <laughs> pain in the ass, man. That's something to be driven. <laughs> And this finish is easy to apply and easy to reapply. And if you scratch it, it doesn't matter. You can just give it another wipe down. Makes all the sense to me and it looks great. I love it. And it works. This is on the Rogue Rat. This one coat was put onto this bare metal about a year ago. I live near the coast and look at it. And if it does flash through in a spot or two, very simple to just take a bit of sandpaper or uh, what do you call that stuff now? Steel wool. <laughs> Give it a bit of a clean up and wipe on another coat. So I will admit it's probably not as durable as a 2K polyurethane coating of some sort. Um, so you've got to maybe reapply it every six months or so. But it's so easy man and it's so friendly. 
Just give it a nice little wipe down again. And Bob's your uncle. To prove my point, let's do this. And we do that. Now if that should happen to your clear coat, you'll be very unhappy chappy. I guess the clear coat versus patina sauce controversy or debate will carry on until there are actually no more old rusty cars left. <laughs> but you know what, that's also cool. Um, differences of opinion is what keeps the world interesting. So each to his own, man. Come on, man. I hate these freaking child-proof lids. I'm not a child. <laughs> Take that. Dull and boring looking. Some oil and that color just pops out. I love this process. <laughs> My cable tie is working, no more rattles. Off the bangle, that is. <laughs> Let's see how this door is going to change. Quite keen to, to see that. You can maybe see how the oil and my dirty rack, which has got a lot of rust dust in it, dulls down that bright paint. And that's exactly what I want to make it look a little bit older and worn and weathered. See, here's another nice thing about the linseed oil. I've already applied my oil in this area, but now I decided I want to get rid of this rust a little bit. So I'm just going to use my wire brush, wire brush it until I'm happy and reapply the oil straight after. There you go, job done. That's not something you can do when you've clear coated. <laughs> <laughs> the controversial spare wheel hump. Some people love it, some people hate it. At least it's not yellow anymore. Let's get some oil on here as well. So let's see what the old girl looks like with her makeup on. Where's my glasses? Oh, that's better. Now I can see. Hey, I think she's turned into a sexy but mature bombshell. <laughs> Isn't it just amazing what some makeup can do? So yeah, it's quite shiny at the moment, but that's because the oil is still wet. 
So as it dries, it will dull down some and we'll get more of a satin look, which I think is much nicer. <laughs> Can you see the little monster here? There's his eye, forehead and mouth. <laughs> The internet tells me that over in the States you can get ready-made Apatina sauces. Now I have no uh, experience with those products and I actually have no interest in, in importing any either. Amazon nails my ass when it comes to shipping costs. So I'm going to stick to my old school boiled linseed oil. I'm very happy with it. I've used it for many years. It's the next day and my oil is dry now. So you can see she's not that shiny anymore. It's got a more of a satiny color now, which I like a lot. So yes, I guess we can call the makeup job done. <laughs> Thanks for spending time with me. I enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a lucky one.